All right, so we are going to learn how to do this whole trigonometry stuff. So let's let's jump in. And we, I want to start by looking at what kind of questions do you first need to be able to answer? And it's these kind of questions, man. Uh, say, for example, they give you something like sine x equals, um, I don't know, 0 0.21, okay? Or if they say cos x equals minus 0 0.31, uh, sorry, 36, pick a different number, or tan x equals whatever, man, you know, like a 0 0.72, okay? So you have to be able to confidently answer sine x equals cos x equals tan x equals. And this, being able to answer this basically is the heart, you know, the heart and soul of being, to answer, of being able to do the whole of trigonometry. If you can do this confidently, you're really kind of flying. Now, here's the next thing. Every single time you see one of these questions, you're going to be given a range for x. So, on, so you'll get something like which, say you got this question, you're also going to be given, oh, uh, we're looking for x has to be, uh, we're looking for values of x between 0 and 360, or maybe be between 180 and, so minus 180 and eight, 180. It could be anything, basically. You know, it could be 0, x, 180. Now, this is crucial, and I'm going to speak about that in a second. So let's just pick one of these questions, this sine x. Uh, why is that not deleting? Oh, God, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So let's focus on this. So you may be thinking, if I give you a question like that, and assuming you know your GCSE maths is fresh and all of that stuff, you will just be thinking, well, why don't I just sign minus one both sides? And let's do that. Okay. So grab a calculator if you haven't. Work along with me. Have your pen and papers out. And let we would just kind of sign minus one both sides. And we get an answer right. Let's look at the answer we get. So sine minus 1, 0 0.21. I've got 12.1. And I'm just going to do it to one decimal place because I can't bother to write all the other stuff. OK, now you may be thinking this. It, well, it seems to make sense. So that's the, there's your answer. Am I done, Ravi? Is this all finished? Ah, also on top of that as well, the 12.1. Look, it falls into that 0 to 360 range. So you may be thinking, ah, brilliant. Happy days. I'm done. No, you are not. Okay, and because what this what this range is actually saying is it's saying, hey, can I have every answer between zero and three sixty? Obviously, twelve point one goes into them. That's definitely a correct answer. But hey, can I have the rest of them? Because what you need to understand about sine x is it actually has an infinite number of solutions. Now, when people hear that, they go, Ugh. I just like equations with one answer. Man, it is so straightforward. It is so simple. And all it requires is you understanding the graph of y equals sine x, the sine, the sine x graph, okay? So let me draw that. And this essentially does become just a memory test, but you'll be using it so many times, it will be second nature to you. So basically, it's, uh, if you ever forget, by the way, you can just use your calculator. So say, for example, you know, this is the x, uh, x um, axis, okay? So obviously, x is zero here. Now, it's going to change every 90 degrees. So let's start mathing that out. So 90, 180, 270, 360, 450, crappy pen, 540, Okay, uh, 630, 720, uh, 810, so on. And you also want to, and it can also go the other way, okay? So minus 90, minus 180, minus 270, minus 360, and so on, okay? Now, you can, a lot of people try to remember this graph. There's nothing wrong with that as well. But the simple thing, man, if you know, if you want to know what its value at zero is, just figure out, just type in sine zero. So if you type sine zero into the graph, sorry, into the calculator, you'll get, uh, you'll get zero. So you know it crosses here. Now, let me tell you another thing about this graph, which I should have said quickly before, okay? It only moves between one and it moves between minus one, okay? 
you'll never get a question. Well, I'll get to that in a second, okay? Let me not confuse things. Okay, uh, so it only moves between one uh, my, and minus one, and it will sometimes be zero as well. So, okay, now put in sign 90. If you do that, you'll find it's one. Uh, 180, it'll be uh, zero, then it's minus one, then it's back to zero, then it's back to one. It literally follows this pattern. It just goes up and down, stopping at like a thing. And if there was a way I used to kind of like think of this when I was kind of studying. So sign zero, it's just basically, imagine imagine you've got a drunk guy here, yeah? He's drunk, yeah? Got a little bottle out, he's drinking. So what happens is imagine if a drunk guy, imagine, so he's starting kind of on the middle line here, yeah? And it's just like, he starts wearing through the thing. He's like, boom, hits the wall. Yeah. And obviously then, you know, even in his drunk, he knows to go the other direction. So he stumbles to the other direction. Obviously goes to the middle, stumbles here, boom, till he comes back, stumbles, boom, dun, 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 boom, dun, 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 dun. Okay. So if you remember that, you can kind of see what's kind of going on here. And basically, obviously the curve just kind of like, You know, just sort of does that wavy motion. And by the way, if you keep doing it as well, surprise, surprise, what do you think is going to be drunks coming this way? So it's going to, this is going to end up at minus one. That's going to be zero. That's going to be here. That's going to be here. And it just keeps waving along the whole way, okay? It is really that simple. There is nothing more to this graph. But what you want to understand is it is going on forever. Now, let's understand, let's go back to this question here. So they want you to find everywhere where sine x is equal to 0.21. Well, you know, for firstly, 0.21 is going to be somewhere around there, not drawn to scale, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so really what they're looking for is if we draw like a line here, you'll actually start seeing we get, we get an infinite number of answers. So for example, here's your number one, here's number two. So you can kind of see these are going to be our x values, which we want. Boom, boom. And it's going to keep going forever, man. Do you see what I mean? Now, here's the deal with what they're saying. They go, we just want the answers between 0 and 360. So essentially what you're doing here now, yeah, is you're just saying, okay, well, we just, we're just looking for the part of the graph which is between 0 and 360. So you really only want, and that one comes just after, by the way, yeah? So you're just interested in this section of the graph. So the, there are two answers which you want. And can you see, you know, 12.1, that's the first one. Does that make sense? That's the first one. So, but we need to get this one as well. And really, if this was, um, you know what, I'm going to broaden, I'm going to later broaden this to if this was 720, what we did, what would you do? Okay, so you've got your first one to 12.1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, by understanding the graph, and it's symmetry, we're gonna find the rest of the answers. So, okay, there's a few things to understand. There's one other thing I want you to understand about the graph. It's actually, if you look at the graph, man, and I'll use pink, it just basically, it sort of does something over 360, and then it just sort of copy pastes itself every 360, does that make sense? So really the zero to 360 range, it just copies itself. Now just keep that in mind. That's, that's going to play a part if this is much bigger and stuff. Okay. So, okay, so let's find this first. Uh, this first answer we found is 120, 12.1. Uh, now, here's the next thing, man. Okay. If you want to find this one, you want to look at this hump of the graph. And, and this can be done like this. Okay. So if you look, take a closer look, here's zero, here's 90, and here's 180. Okay. The first thing to realize, that's a symmetrical hump. It, this is a symmetrical hump. So what you know here is you're looking, you know that this is 12.1 and you're looking for, you're like, well, what is this point? What would this number be? And it's, you've got so many ways of doing it, man. You can either look at it, okay, it says, okay, well, if it's 12.1 that way, then it must be 12.1 that way. So just take away 12.1 from 180. Hopefully that makes sense. So 180 minus 12.1, and I've got 167.9. Okay. So your first answer is 100 and uh, sorry 
but your second answer is 167.9. And it's just, and you, all you do is you do that using symmetry. There's another way you could have done it. I, the reason I want to sh still show it you, you won't actually need it if that makes sense, is um, I want you to recognize, like, don't think you have to latch on to this mentally, like, oh, I've got to remember to take um, 12, you know, if, it, if this is like 12.1, I've got to remember to take away from 180. You know how I feel about that kind of learning. That kind of learning will just box you, man. It'll make this whole thing miserable. Instead, I want you to feel, I want you to aim to get confident with this graph because this graph is not hard. And I will keep going through examples, examples, and I'll keep showing you the graph. Okay, you'll get very used to it very soon. But I want you to understand the graph and the symmetry of the graph. So one way, okay, so let's start again, just for the sake of drilling in hard. Okay, so this is 12 point, you know, okay, so you know, this is, let's get rid of that thing as well. Yeah. You know, that's 12.1, you know, the graph is symmetrical. You're looking for, you know, there's a line running here. So you're bothered about this point and this point. So you can just do, you can say that's 12.1 here, that direction of the green, 12.1. And this direction is 12.12. Uh, this should be 180, by the way is also 12.1. So obviously you can see you take 12.1 away from um, uh, 180 and you got your answer. An alternative way, if you just understand the symmetry of this all, is you could have also done it about this. It's also symmetrical about this 90 point. So you could have figured out this length here. So you do 90, um, 90 minus 12.1 and you could say oh look the distance between here and between 90 and 12.1 is 77.9 oh that means to get to this point on the other side of the reflection uh, sorry symmetry line i just add 77.9 to 90 and if you do that as well you're going to get to the exact same answer okay so 167.9 i make such a point of this because i do not want you to kind of t uh, reduce this to a rule in your head this graph is so piss easy, so goddamn simple. These questions are so, if they explain in a world, they're so just straightforward that it all clicks and it, it will click into place in no problem, okay? It's sorry, in no time. So these are your two answers if they ask you about zero to 360. Now, I wanna ask, speak one more. This might, this graph looks a bit overcolored. That's, uh, uh, forget I made that point. Okay, uh, I want you to imagine now if the question had asked you to go between zero and 720. Now, all this would, this would just mean that you're looking at a bigger range, okay? So you care about all the answers in there. Now, what you can see here is there's now actually four answers. We want this one, we know this is 12.1. We know, so if I just kind of bring it here, we know this is 12.1. We know this is 167.9, okay? Doesn't matter what the range is here, yeah? You're always gonna find those two answers first, always. Now, you may be thinking, all right, I've got more work ahead of me as I find these two and if the range is bigger, more of them. No, you have not. Because the beauty of this graph is, it, it basically repeats itself. So between zero and 360, you know, it goes up, it humps up and it humps down. But after that, all it keeps doing is it just keeps repeating itself. Oh, it's humped up, humped down, humped up, humped down, humped up, humped down. Which means this graph is essentially just between zero to 360, and then it just sort of copy pastes itself here. So this is the beauty of it. So what you do is you look at, and let me clean this up. This has got, so I'm writing over this so many times, it's looking pretty ugly. Okay. Um, so you've got your two points here, okay? You know that's 12.1, you know it's 167. Well, because this repeats itself every 360, you just look at your two answers here and to get to this one here, you just add 360. Literally, it's as simple as that. Can you see, it's almost like you're moving it 360 to the right. So if you want, so here's how I always recommend you lay it out. You'll notice when I found these first two answers, I wrote, um, one up, one on top of each other. That wasn't by fluke, by the way. That's because I'm setting up if I ever need, well, let's see in a second. The reason I didn't put them next to each other is if I need to keep finding more, all I need to do here is I take this 120, uh, 12.1 and I add 360 to it and I've got that point. So, so far I have, if I have that point, then if I add 360, I get that point. 
If I add 360 again, I would get that point. If I add 360 again, I got that point. So if I add 360 to this, uh, well, I could do that in my head. There you go. Now, so we've got the first point and we've got the second point. We also had the second, uh, so first point and the third point. We also had the second point, which is 167.9. Now, if we want to get this fourth point, what do you think we do? Now, if you spot it, it's just because this point is just the copy of that point, just 360 along. So you keep adding 360 to this as well. So this one, you're just going to add 360 to. Now, I do want a calculator for that. 5, 2... Uh, five to seven point nine, and it doesn't matter how big this range is. You would have just kept adding three uh, sixties. If it had gone to minus three sixty as well, no problem. It's still copy paste. So I would take this and I would take away three sixty. You see what I mean? To find that, and obviously to find this point, I would take away three sixty. Ugly page right now, right? But can you see it's simple? So if they if they had made it between minus three sixty and plus seventy, can you see? Look, so I want to make space on this on the left side as well. So I would take away, so it's almost like plus 360, you know, minus 360. So this point, so from the, if I want to find that point, I just find the, that bit and do take away 360. 12.1 uh, take away 360. And this one here is minus 347.9. Uh, if I take away 360 from this one, I get minus 192.1, okay? And the beauty of this is all you have to do, now think about how simple this makes it. Because if I get my range asking between 360, so they could ask me for like minus 900 to, I don't know, 1,081. And you'd literally, you may think, oh my God, how many is that? Who cares? You just find these first two, the 12.1, the 167.9, and then to both of them, you just keep adding 360 until you get past this. Does that make sense? And on the flip side, on the opposite side, you just keep taking away 360 until you get past the minus 900. And then you just collect up all your answers and they're your answers. Okay, does that make sense? Fingers crossed that makes sense. Okay, so let's do another question for sine. And then I'm going to show you for cos and tan. And it's the same. It's exactly the same. Just know the graph, understand its symmetry, and it's the same. Okay, so let's kind of go for another one. I'll give, let's do a negative number. People don't like, no, I'll do another positive, then I'll do another negative. Um, and obviously, look, as I go through this, pause the video, try it yourself with the limited knowledge you have now. You're not going to feel confident, but give it your full heart and soul in trying this question as best as you can. Because uh, I'm going to show you now, anyway, how to do it. So you can follow along. You can skip along to the answer. If you're right, brilliant. Okay, if you're not, then you can watch it through with me. But the doing that, the actually pausing this video now and trying this question is what's going to make you solid. Okay, uh, we'll go for sine x equals 0 0.63. And we're going to, let's pick random crap. And normally the questions won't be this hard. They won't pick random numbers. But for the sake, I want you to feel brilliant with them. Okay, they're saying it's between 100 and, I don't know, uh, 200, shall we say. Mm. All right, so uh, here's my graph of sine x. So it just kind of humps up and down, and it just humps as it. And this is like 1, and this is like minus 1. Okay, so it's humping between here. So, you know, uh, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, this is 360. And really, I only need the graph light up to there anyway. But yeah, I mean, there's no harm in drawing it. Let, let me draw a bad graph. And that's just, that's awful. Okay, nice big graph. I forget that I'm teaching. I'm not doing a question of my own. Okay, uh, humps up and down. Okay, so that's zero. That's 90. That's 180. Then it humps down. A symmetrical hump down as well. That's 270. And that's 360. And I could have kept doing it forever as well. Um, and it would go on forever, but because it's only up to 200, I don't really care for beyond that. To be honest, I wouldn't even care if it, if it just kept going forever because I'm keep adding 360, but whatever, I'll just show you. All right, so that's like 90, and this is like 180. Really, I don't need to do past this. You can even argue I don't need to do this far. 
minus minus sorry this is minus 270 minus 360 and it's just um if i do some red lines you're not going to need to draw this every single time but you know obviously i'm going to show you how it works but draw it as much as the time oh that's not a straight line but you get my point right and this is obviously going between one and minus one. So just for the sake of, okay, so now let's just understand the question. It just wants to know with this graph, y equals sine x, okay? You can see if you compare that, it's just saying, hey, where is y, this uh, this um, axis, 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.63? Well, it's gonna be somewhere around here. And if I do just do left green line across, um, you can see, and then you're going to have a certain number of answers. So you're going to have that. That's going to fall in before 200. You're going to have that one. And actually, that's the only ones you'll actually have. But even if you didn't know that, I'll show you a way which you kind of get it anyway. OK, so what you do right now is you solve the first, you find the first answer just by doing sine minus 1, uh, 0.63. So if you do that, you get your first answer, which is 39.0. Five, so I'll just call it 39.1. Okay, so this is that's your first answer there, 39.1. Now, try use symmetry to find the second answer because that's what you're always going to be doing. And remember, I want you to write that below so we can just start adding 360 and taking it away, even though we know that's the only answer. Okay, um, yeah, I mean, it's simple enough, man. So hopefully, you can kind of see the hump goes from zero, it's symmetrical about 90, and goes from 180. You know that this point is 39.1. So if you look at that, and so you're looking for this equivalent one here as well. So because that's 39.1 from zero, it's also going to be 39.1 from 180. So if you take that away, it is 140.9. And imagine, you know, you, as long as you do that, you don't actually even, to be honest, you just need this part of the, you just need like the zero to 360 graph. You could even argue you only need zero to 180 for this, but Pick the zero, look, make sure you know the zero to 360 graph well, so you can always get your two answers. But once you get those, even if you knew no better, I here's how I used to literally answer it. Without even look, I just sort of half glanced at that and I'll think, okay, if I add 360 to that, okay, uh, so I get the answer which would have came next here. So 390.360, this is how I lit, this is how I personally did it, man. I did 399.1, I'm like, that's, 200, I'm going to stop that as well, and I don't need that. I would also add 360 to that. You can kind of see it's obviously going to be above 200. Um, this would be 500.9. Brilliant. This is over. I don't need that. Let me take away 360 as well from this one. So I can see on the other side. Um, oh, look, it's minus 320.9. Don't need that. Cross that out. Uh, take away 360 from that. And, you know, even that one's going to do the same thing. Uh, minus 219.1. Okay, yeah, brilliant. So I don't need that. Okay. And then you just, it's literally as simple as find the first answer using the calculator, then use the understanding of the graph and the symmetry to find it in its repeating pattern. The three, because it repeats every 360, you just get all the answers in there. It's only two anyway. You just need to find one more. Get that one. So line them up up uh, one above each other and just start adding 360 on either side to both of them and just look at all the answers which fall inside there and actually if you see that i'll show you like what would happen i'll show you how it's exactly the same so they were the answers if i had weren't wasn't crossing them out okay now literally if i just change this range you can just see i just decide which i can cancel certain things out so if this was um until like 410 and this was all the way to like minus 250 i'll just say okay well all right cool that's too far i do want that because that's below that uh do want that do want that that's inside minus 250 that isn't so i've got my four answers here it's so nice yeah it's uh, makes you feel warm inside it's it's lovely okay uh let's do a sign now um we it's a negative where sine x is equal to something negative so sine x equals minus um half not half let's go i mean i could do half 0 0.6 say and let's just make this one a bit stupid and let's go for minus 980 to all the way to what shall we do 
743, okay? Positive 743, it is so simple, okay? So I know my sign and soon, it's just literally, I just care about this, okay? This is my repeating pattern, zero, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, and this is 360. I don't even care about, I mean, look, I'm really, I don't even care about really what goes on beyond that because I now know it's just gonna keep copy pasting on the, onto this side, it's gonna keep copy pasting on that side, so yeah. Okay, um, now what am I doing? Oh yeah, my bad. So I am now in, oh yeah, 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 my bad, my bad, I'm forgetting something. Okay, so this runs between one and this runs between minus one. So I'm looking for when, this is my graph of y equals sine x. So I'm looking for when, uh, you know, to make these two the same. I care about when it equals three, six, uh, zero point, uh, minus 0 0.6. So obviously minus 0 0.6 is gonna be somewhere around, I don't know, here. So if you just kind of draw the line across, you can see it hits two places. It hits that place and it hits that place. Now, for this one, we will find something interesting happens, okay? So here's, um, it's gonna go, okay, so let's find the first answer. We'll find something interesting happens, but you know, you see it. Okay, so x equals sine minus one. Z, uh, minus 0 0.6. Okay, and it's given me the answer of minus 36.9. Oh, some people start feeling like shivers and stuff like that. Now, here's the deal with it, man. The, uh, the calculator will always give you answers between, uh, between, a net, between like, uh, I think it's between minus, it's between positive 180 and minus 180. That doesn't matter. So all you do, if you want to turn that, so that all that's saying is if you kind of follow this graph this way, can you see it's giving you that answer instead of giving you like one of these answers? No problem, no problem whatsoever, okay? So all you need to do with that, I mean, there's a few ways you could do it. If you just want to immediately see that as a positive answer, then you, I guess you could just add 360 to it. So if you, if you look at that, just add 360 to it, okay? I had 360 and you got to that one here. Does that make sense? So, or I'll show you both ways. Sorry, I've just got a few things in my head. I'm like, which one shall I go for? Either would work. Okay, you know what? Let's not do the 360. I'll even show you how simple it is the other way. You could have done that, do the 360 there. No, it's great. I'll show you both ways. Okay. If you realize they've given you that answer because the uh, graph goes on forever, you can just add 360 and get this number. Okay. Um, so this number is, um, well, let's just do it, minus uh, 36.9 plus 360, uh, you get 323.1. And that's just by doing the normal add 360, okay? So you've got that one there. And um, you can now basically just kind of either do the symmetry here. So, okay, so let's do the symmetry here. So you know that it's symmetrical about 270 and you know that's 360 and you know that's 180, okay? So you know that this one here is uh, 323.1. So here's what we can do. So what that tells us is, hey, this distance between 360 and 323.1 is gonna be the same distance between 180 and where the answer is. So let's find that distance first. We do 360 minus uh, 323.1, and we find that the answer here is, uh, so the distance here is 36.9. So that means this answer is 36.9 as well. So you just do one, uh, 180 plus 36.9, okay? Now, what we've done there is we've got that, we've got those two answers in the same sort of like repeating 360, and we're basically done now. And uh, so we can start off with our, 360, two answers like this. Uh, let's move them. Okay, and now I'm sort of, now it's easy street, you know. Now I can just, here's my 360. Now I can just keep adding 360 to both of these. So I pick up all the answers. So literally, let's just do it how we do it. Okay, so let's add 360 to this. Uh, th uh, 323.1, add 360. 
we've now got to 683.1. That's a good answer because that's inside the th uh, 743. And to be honest, I mean, you can obviously just add 360 to it, you, but you pretty quickly know by adding 360 to that number, you're going to get past that. So I might as well stop there. Um, I will also, so I've added 360 there. Okay, let me start taking away 360 until I hit that minus 980. And it literally is as simple as that. So 323.1 minus 360. Uh, I have got minus 36.9, uh, which was actually that original point, but that's irrelevant. Uh, take away minus 360 again. I haven't given myself enough space to get all the answers. Let's move it to the side. Whoops. Okay. So take away 360 from that. I've got to minus 3. 96.9, good, that, I still want to keep going. I want the answer, take away 360. Yeah, minus 756.9. Now, obviously, if I take away 360 there, it's going to get bigger than that. And you can obviously check with calculator and stuff. Okay, so we've got all the like, we've got all the top, uh, the answers for the top ones. Let's go to 216.9. Uh, so if I add 360 to that, uh, how about that? Uh, 216.9 plus 360. Uh, I get 576.9. If I add 360 to that, yeah, I get 936.9, but I don't want that. Okay, so I can stop here now. And I'll take it now, we'll go this way, take away 360s from there. Okay, so we've got uh, minus 143.9. It gets to the point of it's actually boring just to write it down, you know. But boring is fine. Don't understand it. That's the pain in the ass. Yeah, okay, now for take more. So there you go, 10 answers. But you're not going to get a question that's going to be that ridiculous, trying to get three, 10 answers from you, testing if you can add and take away 360 forever. But you get my point, right? All right, now let's get to... Mm, let's look at cos. It's the same, man. Okay, it, it's exactly the same. So you've got, but obviously the graph is different. So I just want to show you how the graph's different. You understand symmetry and you just, you're for cruising. Okay, cos x equals 0 0.13. By the way, if this, you know, if this, say for example, if this video does, if there's any part that doesn't make sense, then yeah, I mean, just, you know, like it's, make sure you um, look over it again. I mean, why am I, I don't even know why I'm saying this. Obviously look, yeah, it's uh, just a, Forget it, okay? Yeah, okay, let's carry on anyway. Okay, so cos x equals 0 0.13. And let's just start with, I don't know, uh, zero, between zero and 720. Okay, between zero and 720. Okay, so let's just understand the graph, the graph of cos. I remember if you didn't know it, you could just basically um, just stick in values into the calculator between like cos zero, cos, cos 90, cos 180, cos 270. All these graphs, change every 90. So you only care about 90 and then you just sort of fill in the dots. But I mean, you can look in a, you can look in a, you can look in a, um, in the book and just remember it or whatever. It doesn't, it, it, it's irrelevant, man. Just as long as you understand, oh yeah, the graph looks like that. It all, cos X also goes between one and minus one. It's virtually the same graph assigned. It's just shifted 90 over. So instead of where sign starts at zero, so I just put 90, 180, 270, 360, 450, um, 540, 630, and so on, okay? Um, so in, where sine x starts at zero, and sort of kind of wiggles up that way, then comes down, then wiggles it down that way, goes like that. The only thing cos does, literally the only thing, only difference of cos is it starts at one. So obviously it's not gonna go that way. So obviously it comes down, keeps going till it hits that, hits the minus one, that sort of like drunken wall, if you will. It's the maxed out. And I should actually put the dotted lines to be honest. Okay, it hits that. It starts coming back around, uh, comes back around, hits that there. Uh, and from here, by the way, here's its 360 thing, okay? That is its 360. Now all it's gonna do is repeat, boom. Boom, and it would just keep going on forever. But there's your 360 where it repeats, okay? 
So let's let's solve. Uh, let's do x equals uh, cos minus one zero point thirteen to get our first answer. So I just kind of like you know I actually used to do it like that. I just used to write x here. And so okay, my first answer is if I do cos minus one point thirteen, my first answer is eighty two point five. Well, you can kind of see man. So oh yeah, I forgot to put in here as well. So you know um, we are looking. It's going to be about 0 0.13 here. Doesn't really matter where. And you can see, you know, you're just going to go keep going across there, and that's all the points you want. But you know, that's my first point. And doesn't it look just ba bang about right? 82.5. Okay, so that's 82.5. And now you can see, just if I all I need to do is I need to find the second one in the repeating pattern, and then I can just sort of do the exact same thing and just start keep adding 360 to get that one, add 360 to get that one, and so on. So, on. okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, how can we do this? Okay, the symmetry for this one is you can actually see it's actually symmetrical about 180. It's just like this big bell curve about 180. That's that's its symmetry. So let's just have a look at that. So let's understand the symmetry like that. And it's symmetrical about 180. All right, so we've got this point that's about here, you know, and we know that this is 82.5 and we're looking for this point here. Okay, well, if this is zero and this is 360, then you can kind of, the, again, there's two ways, man. You can just see that it's um, the distance between zero and the actual point is 82.5, obviously, because it's going to be zero between there. That means it, the distance between 360 to the second point, because it's symmetrical, is 82.5. So if you go to the calculator 360 minus 82.5, um, you'll get your second answer, which is 2. Uh, 77.5 okay and again it looks right doesn't it <laughs> not that yeah and that's it man you've you've got your two answers inside the bit which always repeats now and now you've got just that nice relaxed thing just keep adding 360 uh i just keep adding 360 to the top until you hit 720 and then start adding 360 to the bottom until you hit that as well i mean there's not much chances to this anyway so do that 82.5 plus 360 you got 442.5, uh, 277.5, oh, my bad, yeah. So 442.5, you could add 360 to that just to make sure, but you quickly realize it's 802.5. Don't want that, that's not, that's, not the, that's not the answer they're looking for, it's past 720, and I'm not gonna carry on. With 277.5, let me add 360 to that. So that gives me 637.5. And yeah, I mean, I could add 360 to make the double show, but it's pretty obvious now if I keep adding, it's going to go past. Here's my four answers. And literally, you know, when you give the answers, you literally just write them all out. It doesn't matter what order you write them, just say, it's, these are the answers. I'm not going to show you. There's no point in me showing you, hey, this is how you write the answers. I'm basically telling you, here's how you write numbers with commas between them. So that's pretty straightforward as well, yeah? And practice these. Obviously, look, um, go into the textbook, practice these questions. But just have a vision right now. Your first aim is getting rock solid with the sine x equals, cos x equals, and obviously tan x equals, which is what I'm showing you now. So tan x, so sine x and cos x are virtually the same graph, okay? But it's just basically sine x starts at zero and starts waving like that, where cos x starts at zero and then starts waving like that. They're the exact same. Now, Tan x, if you find these okay, tan x is a dream because it's so piss. You know, I'll show you why. Okay, the graph looks uglier, but there's no diff. The graph is just the graph. And if you ever forgot it, you could just start typing in values into the calculator anyway. But it's um, don't let the graph fool you. So this graph has asymptotes and stuff like that. And people are like, oh my God, asymptotes. Oh. No, man, it's so easy. Okay, so. Again, we're interested in every 90. You're gonna love this. If, if, if the first bunch made sense, this is so easy. I'll show you why it's so easy as well. Okay. And then like sine and tan, it doesn't actually stop. It doesn't work between zero and minus one. It can go on to infinity. And as with everything else, it can repeat forever. So let's first throw up a question, okay? 
So you could be asked to find tan x equals 0 0.7. But unlike sine and cos, this could also be like 33.8. It doesn't just hover between 0 and 1. And I'll show you questions on that. Okay, so if all we need to know with the graph, okay, so type in the value of, uh, type in tan zero, and you'll quickly realize that uh, it has a value of uh, zero. Now type in tan 90, you'll get an interesting result. Yeah, you get a mathematical error because there's an asymptote there. Okay, so there's an asymptote there. Okay, type in tan minus 90. Again, you'll get a very interesting uh, result you'll get another mathematical error. So that means there's an asymptote there. So it never actually touches this bit. So what you need to know about tan x, and obviously you can't figure it out. Well, you could figure out the calculus. You could find a value of like tan 10, tan 30, tan, uh, you know, tan 40, 50, whatever. But essentially all you need to know is after zero, it just kind of goes up and it keeps going up and just shoots off to infinity, close and close against to 90. And, as, and it also shoots down to minus infinity Obviously, it shouldn't wobble like that. And it just shoots off like that. Okay. Now, here's the beauty of this. Here's the real beauty. You know, with the other graphs where it repeated every 360, tan 80 just repeats over this 180, this range of between minus 90 to 90. So, what you can very quickly do is you can just say, oh, it's the same all every time. You cannot believe how easy this makes these questions. I used to, you know, like it's so I remember like when I was doing exams, you know, obviously like sign and cause. Yeah, man, I'm like, all right. Yeah, you know, there's a bit of an effort. I did obviously, you know, you study, you don't feel you don't realize how simple it is. Um, but when Tan used to come, oh, man, easy marks. So my brain used to relax. But yeah, essentially, look, it, this one also costs 90 and it's just it's the same, man. It just repeats now. So between minus 90 and 90 it repeats between 90 to 270 it repeats between there and there repeats between here and here, repeats between there and there. Okay, now why does this make this so easy? Oh my God, you're gonna love this. So let's imagine they gave you a range and let's call it between zero to, shall we say 600? Okay, let's make it thing. Okay, let's go. Let's even make it a bit more interesting, minus 200. Random numbers, random numbers. Okay, so what they're looking for is obviously somewhere on this x coordinate, yeah? So y, uh, y axis, there is 0 0.7. So if we just visually kind of understand the results we're going for, we are looking for, you know, where it's like this. And you can see we're just sort of like crossing here, 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 you know? So that would be infinite. And that would just keep going on forever. Here's the beauty, okay? So now, solve to find the first value tan minus 1, 0 0.7. Again, I'll just put my values of x here, yeah? Um, so tan minus 1, 0 0.7. And you th that was virtually 35 on the dot, okay? But 34.9, I'll just call it 35. Now, here's the beauty, okay? Because in this root, can you see inside this 180, this is the only place where it equals 0 0.7. It's not like it curves back down. So I need to find a second thing. This is the beauty of tan x. Because then, if I want to find this answer, I know it's a copy-paste uh, of another 180. So all I have to do, I don't have to find the second answer. As soon as I've got my 35, I just keep adding 180, because it repeats every 180. I just keep, start, keep adding 180. I can take away 180. And I just do that. It's as simple as that. So now all I just do is I just do uh, 180. No having to find that second answer. No thinking about symmetry. I mean, it's not, I mean, I don't think that's particularly hard anyway, but oh my God, this takes it to another level where it's even easier. So here we go, 35 plus 180, so 215, good. That's still inside uh, um, 600, add 180 again. 395, add 180 again. Uh, 575, and obviously if I add more than that, I'm gonna go for 600. Let's also take away 180. 35 minus 180, so we've got minus 145. Take away, if I take away 180, it's not going to pass that. There you go, got my five answers. I just happen to have five answers. Total fluke that actually drew it. Did I, yeah, whatever, whatever, no. Well, I haven't even drawn the right one because that one's not included. Forget it, yeah, this, hurrah, okay? It is that lovely. Um, I'll show you just for the sake of one more. You know, I can, Tan x could literally equals equals uh, 
I don't know, uh, 13.4. It's not an issue. One second. I'm just you making sure I'm not using a dumb example. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So if it had asked you for 13.4, what's the only thing that's really changing here? Uh, close to nothing, really. It's just that instead of this being 0 0.7, you're looking at 13.2, which actually would have been more up here if you kind of killed that there. But whatever, man. Here's, here's, there's just a bunch of answers, basically. So yeah, if you want to find it, just, um, you know, you just do 10 minus 1, 13.4. Yeah, and you get an answer of 85.7. Now I just keep adding 180, take away 180 and until I get all the answers in there. I want it. And by the way, oh yeah, here's another thing I want you to remember as well. You have you must only give the answers which fall in that range. If you give them an extra answer, they will take away a mark. So just to remember, I mean just don't make a dumb error, basically. Okay. So yeah, I think that, that wraps up this section. Um good. Good, good, good section. I hope you had fun.